a Norman window has the shape of a rectangle surmounted by a semicircle. So on top of the rectangle is a semicircle, half of a circle. If the perimeter of the window is 30 feet, perimeter of the window is 30 feet, find the value of x so that the greatest possible amount of light is admitted. Here we have x labeled as this bottom dimension um, of the base of the window. So if that is going to be x, then for the circle, we care about the radius. And for the circle, it's going to be x over 2 for the radius. This other dimension, the height of the window, which is called it y, the height of the rectangular part of the window, we'll just call that y. And so when they say the amount of light admitted through the window, basically the bigger the area, the bigger the light's going to be admitted. So we'll go with area. So what's the area of this window? There's two parts. There is the rectangle, which is x times y. And then there is the circle which is half, so pi over 2, times the radius squared. And the radius is x over 2. So squaring out, we get x squared over 4, so pi over 8x squared. Now that is the area of the window, which will be the thing that we need to maximize. What's the issue with it? It has two variables. It has x and y. So we have to relate the variables to each other. If we can get y as a function of x or x as a function of y, then we can have this to be a single variable and we can do our optimization with it. So we need some kind of constraint. The constraint is about the perimeter. The perimeter of the window is 30 feet. The perimeter of the window. Well, the perimeter of the window is made up of two different parts. There's a rectangular Part, not all four, but just the three parts here, and then the sort of half circle, the semicircle part here. So we have this rectangular part and then the semicircle part. For the rectangular part, we have a x and a y and a y, and for the um, semicircle part, we have half of the circumference. Circumference is um, 2 pi r or pi d. So 2 pi r would be 2 pi x over 2. Half of that. Half of that circumference is the, is the uh, part of, for the top of the window perimeter. So cancel the 2's. And we'll have pi over 2x. Put the 2y's together. We have 2y and x. Should all add up to 30. So we can take and solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. Doesn't really matter. But if we solve for y we'll have 30 minus the x minus the pi over 2x and then that's equal to 2y and then we divide by 2. We take each individual term and divide it by 2 and get 15 minus half of x minus a fourth of uh, pi x. So that will be how y is related to x. Because it is constrained about perimeter of window available then that causes y not to be its own variable if y is dependent on x and so then we could take that and plug that in to replace the y in our area formula. So we say x times that formula on x, which is for y, and then we add pi over 8x squared. And now we're going to distribute. We take the x across, we have x times 15, x times minus 1 half x, x times minus pi over 4x. And then putting terms together that are alike, we have all these x squared terms. A half, these two involve pi. This is minus a fourth of pi. This is plus an eighth of pi. These two together are minus an eighth of pi. And then we have this minus half of pi. I'm sorry, minus half of x squared. And so if we want, we can we could leave it like this, or we could uh, put this together, but we like to be able to have the, the simplest form of the coefficient on x squared. So we can just then take and um, do the derivative here. So let's go ahead and um, put this together as uh, 4 plus pi. Because this half will be multiplied on top and bottom by 4. 
So we have uh, 4 plus pi all over 8. So we already take the derivative, and we need to um, use the power rule. So we have a uh, 15. We have a uh, 15 minus just the constant that's in front of x. When we double it, we get uh, 4 as the denominator. So we get um, the 8 and the 2 will cancel, and we get the 4 in the denominator. Right, so this is our derivative. What do we do with the derivative? We have to set it equal to zero. So, set it equal to zero, we have to solve for x. Just, you know, the four plus pi all over four, you can leave it like that or call it one plus pi over four. Either way, we're going to then um, add that term over to the other side and then divide by it or multiply by its reciprocal. So the 15 will be multiplied by the four and then it'll be divided by four plus pi and we get the value of x to be 60 over 4 plus pi. All that shows is that it makes the derivative of 0. It doesn't show that we have maximized this area. And so we need to argue with that. Uh, when x is equal to that, it turns out y is, is some something not very easy to write out. So it's OK if we don't write the y. What do they want? They want the value of x. So. Um, it's great that we don't have to actually find what the y is because it's going to be a bit of trouble trying to get the formula for it. We don't need it. Find the value of x so that the greatest possible amount of light is admitted. So we just need to prove that we have emitted the most light possible or that we have maximized the area of this window. And we're going to go with the approach of looking at the second derivative. If our first derivative is 15 minus this quantity times x, then our second derivative is just this negative of this quantity. It doesn't depend on x at all. So the second derivative is negative for all x. And what that does is that causes your function to be always concave up. I'm sorry, concave down. So what we found here was a maximum but at the point we found it it was actually a local maximum this value here 60 over 4 plus pi if we allow x to be anything smaller than that our derivative will be positive if we allow x to be anything bigger than that our derivative will be negative negative. Right, this is about 60 over 7 something smaller than 10 so you can just try different numbers and see that when x is you know something like 1 we'll get positive uh, area um, derivative when x is something like 1 but then as soon as x goes past that and becomes something like 10 then um, it goes negative and so we, what we've done is really show that it's a local max but this local max together with the fact that you're always concave down would then mean that the local max that you found is actually an absolute max as long as the function is continuous and it's true. So we found an absolute max when x is 60 over 4 plus pi.